I'm back. You're listening to the Hour of the Time, and I'm William Cooper. Well, folks, <laughs> I think tonight is going to be interesting. I've got some letters to read, and uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be revealing. It's also going to uh, confirm a few things. And then I've got a book. I'm going to talk about if I get time. If not, I'll talk about it tomorrow night. So, uh, I think you'll find this broadcast entertaining, illuminating, interesting, fact-filled. You know, I get letters from people all the time. I get so many letters that it is absolutely impossible to answer them. You see, I don't have any staff. I don't have a research team here. You know, I have researchers all over the world. I have intelligence gatherers, if you will. I have station chiefs all over the, the world. And uh, they're busy collecting, researching, accumulating, analyzing intelligence, which all ends up here and goes through another analysis and another verification. And nothing is ever used unless it's absolutely confirmed by two different sources that have no connection to each other. And then we assemble two puzzles, if you will. One is the truth, and the other one is the deception, because it's important that we know what the truth is, because that's the way we must live our lives. That's what we must deal with. And then it's important that we know the deception so that we know what our enemy is trying to manipulate us with, where we're being herded, if you will, if you're part of the sheeple, because they are being herded all the time. They have no conception of what's going on. They do things based upon input that they have no conception of its truth or falsity. They just are herded. Not very far from here, about a 20-minute drive, is one of the largest herds of sheep I've ever seen in my life, tended by one solitary lone shepherd who listens to this broadcast every night. He has a little trailer, and he's all alone up there on the mountain, except for his dogs. Occasionally, I drive up there and park upon a hill just to watch how the dogs play the sheep how they manipulate them and deceive them and herd them and make them go where they want. And it is incredibly educating, <laughs> much more than you could possibly believe. The shepherd has trained his dogs well. And, of course, at the end of the season, the sheep are sheared. Some of them are sent off to the slaughterhouse. And, ladies and gentlemen, it is no different with human beings in this world, in this country, I can assure you. Now, I try to answer the most important letters that I get, and sometimes I don't even get to all of those. I kid you not, the volume of mail here is literally overwhelming. Most of the mail that I deal with and answer are SCRs, which are station chief reports. Um, Intelligence reports that require my immediate intention, attention, uh, operations that we have ongoing that require supervision and direction, and in some cases training, things of that nature. But I do read everything that comes in, 
Every scrap of paper is read. Now, I can give you a little hint. If you send me something and you want to know absolutely whether or not I received it, send a postcard that has a stamp on it with your address on it. And just put on the back, I received this on such and such a date and then leave a blank. And if I get it, I'll fill in that date and send it back to you. And you'll know at least that I received it. But some things, you know, occasionally I like to read on the air because it helps all of us understand what's happening. And some things I read on the air simply because it's a good letter from a good listener who is intelligent and who is not a sheep. Bull, <laughs> if you will. So... <clears throat> And also, I received a call recently from my people on the East Coast who attended a militia meeting in Sturbridge, Michigan. They told me that there was a man there named Carl who said that he knew me personally, talked to me all the time, and that he was really putting out some really terrible information about me. I couldn't figure out who this was because to tell you the truth, folks, I don't know anybody named Carl. I don't talk to anybody named Carl. So I couldn't figure out who this was. I sent my people to find out because this person was just spreading the most despicable rumors. It sounded like ADL to me, to tell you the truth. And then tonight I found out who it was. The guy called, said he was Carl, and I immediately recognized his voice. He was a man who called me recently about a book that he had read and about a friend of his who did tapes and wanted to get on my show. So his friend contacted me and we talked, and that's it. I mean, that's the extent of this person's knowledge of me or me of him. And so I asked him if he had attended the militia meeting in Sturbridge, Michigan. He said yes. Well, I'm not going to tell you what I told him because it would frost your ears. He is a liar. He does not know me, has never met me, has never spoken to me other than on the telephone, a couple of short conversations. And uh, his assertion to those people at that militia meeting that he knows me personally and knows anything about my character or my personality or what I do or how I do it, was a lie. So I want all of you on these coasts who attended that militia meeting to know it. And I want all of you listening to understand, and understand this as well as you possibly can. Anyone like me who dares to get on the radio and tell the truth to the world is going to be attacked from many, many sources. And they're going to be sources that you would least likely to expect. Be extremely suspicious of anyone who tells you that they know me personally. You see, I live way out in a rural area. Very few people know me personally. The ones that do are directly connected with the intelligence service, the Second Continental Army of the Republic, are people who live here. Bear that in mind. Also bear in mind that anything that you're liable to hear about me or my family or what I do is most likely to be invented. And if you want to know the truth, you arrange to come and meet me and find out what the truth really is. You would be amazed at how simply we live. You would be amazed at how much I love my family and my home. You would be amazed at how much of my time is taken up with work, researching, work, administering the intelligence service and the Citizens Agency for Joint Intelligence, writing, keeping track of my email, reading the mail, which takes half a day, almost every day. I spend half a day just reading mail. And then putting together and doing these broadcasts. I doubt if any of you understand really the kind of dedication, the kind of loyalty, and the amount of work
So these people that tell you that I'm involved in all of these other things or that I'm sitting in a bar all day getting drunk or, or uh, beating my wife or any of these other bullshit stories that you might hear, um, I don't know where they come from or what kind of rock they crawl out from under. But I guarantee you they are cockroaches and they do crawl out from under rocks. And they do it because I have shined the light in the corner where they live and they don't like it and they don't like me. They never deal with the facts. One thing that you'll always discover about these people is they cannot deal with facts. They will not refute the facts that you hear on this broadcast. They will not debate the facts. They will not in any way even acknowledge those facts. Instead, they will attack my character. And the theory is, goes something like this, folks. If I am an alcoholic and get drunk, then nothing that I say to you over this radio broadcast could possibly be true. Could it possibly be true? If I rob banks, then you can't pay any attention to anything that I say. If I murdered somebody 50 years ago, which I didn't, none of this is true, by the way, then you cannot believe anything that I say. This is a typical socialist communist trick right out of the KGB training for their disinformation specialists. And by the way, the CIA practices the same bullshit. And uh, you need to hear more of it, and I'm going to bring a lot of it to light, you know, and I've told you this before, and I'll tell you this again. If you really want to deal with it in a proper perspective, ladies and gentlemen, you believe whatever you want about me. Believe the worst thing that you can possibly imagine. In fact, put a big poster on the wall, and at the top say, Bill Cooper is. Write that in big letters so you can't miss it. Under there, put murderer, put drunk, put wife beater, put uh, bank robber, put child molester, put uh, right-wing extremist, put uh, uh, racist, put uh, anti-Semitic, put anything you want on there that makes you happy. And then listen to this broadcast and see if it changes any of the facts or the documentation or the reality of the information that I give you. I want you all to do that. Because to tell you quite frankly, folks, I don't give a rat's ass in hell what any of you think about me. I care only about saving liberty for this nation. Because if I fail, it means my family and my children and all of those people whom I love and really do know and who really do know me are going to suffer terribly in the future. Now, don't go away. Because as soon as we come back, we're going to hear from the real white supremacist, the real racist, the real scumbags. Sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. Oh, no. It's Major Donald V. Clerken of the Euro-American Alliance. He's Superman, white, Aryan, Anglo, racist supremacist. He can fly. Can you? Listen to this bullshit, folks. This is the kind of crap I get. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I get so much of this. The Jews call me anti-Semitic, the stupid Jews. The smart Jews know that I'm not. The uh, 
Aryan nations in the Euro-American alliance call me a Jew-loving race traitor. And I could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. At least the blacks are honest. They call me the only white man that ever told them the truth. <laughs> and that's a fact. doesn't mean they like me, because nobody likes anybody that tells the truth. And that's also a fact. But listen to this. Up at the top, see this guy claims he's an American. But he's not an American. He is so caught up in this Hitler thing. He wants so badly to have his own SS stormtrooper uniform and to raise Hitler from the grave so that he can stick that arm up there and yell Sieg Heil every chance he gets. This guy is living in fantasy land. He's whacked out, to tell you the truth. I respect his right to believe whatever he wants. The problem is, is this is one of the people who causes most of the trouble for all of us. And the guy that shot Yitzhak Rabin in Israel is another one. And folks, if you believe this bullshit that he was just a lone, wacko assassin like Lee Harvey Oswald or Timothy McVeigh, then you're whacked out and you're not playing with a full deck of cards. Listen to this letter from the Euro-American Alliance. Mr. Cooper, this issue of the truth at last demonstrates that it is in fact the Jews. They don't dance to the tune of the Scottish Rite. It is the other way around. Well, he sent me this paper called The Truth at Last. I looked all through it. I read every word. It does not in that paper in any way, shape, or form. And I would read the whole thing to you over the air if I had time, but I don't. That it's the Jews. Some of the things that they say in there... Yes, are perpetrated by some Jews. Most of the things they say in that paper are the biggest pack of bullshit lies I've ever read in my life. And that's the truth. You see, these people have to have an enemy, just like some Jews have to have an enemy. And some rabbis preach to those Jews that they must not venture outside their little Jewish ghetto. They must not assimilate. They must maintain their Jewish culture at all cost. They must not be patriotic to the country wherein they live. You see, this isn't all Jews. This is the Jewish leaders, just like it's some white leaders, just like it's Jesse Jackson, just like it's... And I could go on. If you're intelligent, you know exactly what it's all about. And the paper in there, nowhere in that paper did it mention the Scottish Rite or the fact that the Jews control the Scottish Rite or the other way around. And it's just not true, folks. The Jews do not control the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. But the B'nai B'rith, which is the equivalent of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry for the Jews, and the Scottish Rite work together, ladies and gentlemen. And B'nai B'rith is not all Jews, any more than Zionism is all Jews. In fact, most Zionists, if you want to know the truth, are Christians like Jerry Falwell. Were you aware of that? And Pat Robertson, who is also a Zionist. Now let me continue with this letter. He says... Concerning mongrelization, you claimed last night that the mongrel is smarter and healthier than the thoroughbred. Now, I wonder what he's talking about, ladies and gentlemen. You see, when man discovered horses, there were no thoroughbreds. They were wild horses. Mangy. Ugly. Hairy. Thoroughbreds, ladies and gentlemen, are the product of selective breeding and not with the same strain. You see, Major Clerkin here doesn't know his butt from a hole in the ground. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. A few hundred years ago, there were no German shepherds. 
There were no greyhounds. There were no ladies and gentlemen, or I should say none, of the wonderful breeds of dogs that we have today. Are the breeds of horses, including the most beautiful, wonderful, thoroughbred horses that exist, are all products of cross breeding and selective breeding to bring those animals into being. It's amazing that these people who claim that they know all about the purity of the race and all of this crap and intelligence and what brings out the best in breeding really don't know much at all. Throughout the history of the world, it has been shown that in breeding in the same family, in the same tribe, over generations and hundreds of years, produce idiots, produce a destruction of that tribe and of that family, produce morons, produce ugliness, deformities, all kinds of strange things. And occasionally, a genius will pop up, or somebody that's really beautiful. Genetics has proven that the strongest, most intelligent, the most <clears throat> true to the species breeding occurs when a lot of crossbreeding has occurred. And he's wrong about what I said the other night anyway. What I said is most children from mixed racial marriages are prettier, healthier, and more intelligent than the average child. I didn't say anything about thoroughbreds. And I doubt, ladies and gentlemen, that there are too many people who can prove that they're really thoroughbreds anyway. You know, my family thought that they were pure lily white until they began doing the family tree and found out there was an American Indian back there. And boy, you should have seen what that did to the family conversations about the ancestors. Nobody wanted to talk about it for years. Except me. I was proud of it. Still am. I don't think there's too many people in this world that if they really go back and follow their family tree honestly and say that they're thoroughbreds. Especially in Europe where so many invasions and so many wars and things took place and where the policy of the conqueror was to rape. Rape, rape, rape. Producing what Major Clerken calls mongrels. What is it that brings a human being that has the same brain as me or anyone else down to the level of gutter mud? Let me finish this, and then we'll talk about it. Concerning mongolization, you claimed last night that the mongrel is smarter and healthier than the thoroughbred. There is in the world, cities of the planet, a mongrel cur. It is the same in every city of the world, the result of free interbreeding of dog varieties. The color of the cur is yellow-brown. The tail curls over its back. Its face is fixed in a snarl. The world cur is a scavenger. This dog displays no ability to serve man in any capacity. It is a worthless animal that has no redeeming value, neither is it aesthetic in its look? The idea that hatred amongst the races can be expunged through mongrelization is as Marxist an idea as I have ever heard. I had rather have the hatred than dissipate the glories of Western man through miscegenation. We who labor to bring about the future will not have the mongrel amongst us. For you to say that nothing is harmed through race mixing is disproved by the downfall of India and Egypt. 
two ancient white civilizations that destroyed themselves with miscegenation. The Aryan Republic will not make the same mistake as this misbegotten America has made. Sincerely, Donald, Major Donald V. Clerken, Chairman, Commander, Euro-American Alliance, Incorporated. Isn't this amazing? He says the idea that hatred amongst the races, as if hatred is a natural thing, it is not. Hatred is created by teaching it to children. And he calls the idea that hatred amongst the races can be expunged through mongrelization is as Marxist an idea as I've ever heard. It has nothing to do with Marx, ladies and gentlemen. And it shows that Major Donald V. Clerken does not have ears and he does not have a brain. Apparently he was not listening to my broadcast. What I said is that in the interest of preserving liberty, the human race had better mature. Which means if the human race can mature and can realize that the different races of humans are as valuable and can contribute as much as the different races of dogs, or horses, or cattle. You see, Clerken doesn't understand that there were no black Angus, or Herefords, or any of the other of the wonderful breeds of cattle that we have today in the beginning. They're the product of cross-breeding and selective breeding to bring them about. But that's not what I was talking about that night. What I said was, if the human race can mature, none of these things ever need happen. Because then we will understand the true meaning of liberty, which means to be tolerant, to live together, understanding each other as much as we can, and giving everyone the freedom that you expect for yourself. In other words, I don't care what you do, and you shouldn't care what I do, as long as I do not injure your person or your property ever, or the person or property of any other human being. And that I have some kind of concept about a belonging to the community. You see, if I know every Sunday morning that the church is going to have service, and I pick that time to sit in my car out in front of the church and honk my horn. I'm wrong in doing that. And eventually someone is going to make sure that I suffer some consequences of that act because there will be some kind of community action against it. I said that if the human race cannot mature, and I was reading from this text here, that something else had to occur. If all these races can't get along with each other and all these religions, and I wasn't talking about just race, I was talking about religion too. If they can't get along with each other, there will be perpetual war between them. If the human race can't mature and accept other people of other religions and other races and other colors, then there will be perpetual war between them. If there's pe perpetual war, what does this Major Donald V. Clerken propose to do? Is he going to kill everyone on this earth who doesn't look like him, or would it be a better thing if Major Donald V. Clerken learned to live with other people? And if that can't happen, and if we don't want to kill everybody who doesn't look like us, which is one of the ways of solving it, there's another way. Marriage between the races, which would produce children, which eventually would result in one race upon this earth, which would not war against each other. I don't advocate any of these things. I believe in liberty. I did not marry my wife because she's Chinese. I married my wife because I love her. One of the things that Major Donald V. Clerken and his ilk are all upset about is that they believe that they are being 
forced to interbreed with other races and it will eventually cause the extermination of the Anglo-Aryan genetic strain, the purity of the race. Well, my message to Major Donald B. Clerkin and all of those who believe, as he does, is that I don't see any laws anywhere that says that they have to interbreed with anyone or that anyone else has to interbreed with anyone. I don't see anyone forcing anyone to marry anybody of any other race whatsoever. And I happen to spend a little bit of time today looking through the statistics, both through several computer databases and in the library that I own, which is quite extensive, and those of you who have seen it, you know that, to find out what the percentage of people are who marry outside their race and produce racially mixed children like my family. And what I discovered, Major V. Clarkin, is that you are in no danger because the percentage of people who actually do that are very, very small. So small as to almost be insignificant. Now that tells me that something else is at work here. It tells me that all of you who are so worried about the what do they call it? The corruption of the race. Are having problems with women. And maybe that's your real problem. Maybe you need to go back to your mom and pop and have a talk about the birds and the bees. Maybe you're not doing it right. <laughs> You know, otherwise you'd all have no problems finding a blonde, blue-eyed girl and marrying and having 24 kids and uh, making sure that there was no danger to the extinction of the white race. And i got to tell you something else, Mr. Clerkin. You are your own worst enemy. You see, all of your assertions prove what it is that you claim is not true. See, you claim that your race built civilization. You claim that your race is the most intelligent. You claim that your race is the future of humanity, and if it's destroyed, humanity will suffer or disappear or turn into dogs in the gutter. And you prove your own self wrong, and I'll tell you why. Everybody out there who has a brain and can use it, listen very carefully to me. I looked at the statistics, and the t statistics say that the percentage of Jews in the overhaul population of the United States of America is just under 4%. Now, if you really believe what these people say, and that there's a lot of Jews pretending that they're not Jews, and they've changed their name and all this other bullshit, and who cares if they did anyway... How do you know my name's really William Cooper? How do we know Donald V. Clerkin is really his name? How do we know he's not really Aggie Schwartz? And who cares? You see, here's the thing. If this country was really built by all white people, and if this country is really supposed to be for only white people, and if the white people is the superior race in intellect, and if the Christian religion is the superior religion of all the religions of the earth, why is it, Mr. Donald B. Clerkin, that less than 4% of the entire population of all these white people has succeeded in taking all your businesses away from you, stealing all your media and newspapers and television and radio and Hollywood all away from you, and it's taken over the country, and it's taken over the world, and it's taken over everything, and is destroying you. 
You see, because if that's really true, Mr. Clerken, by your own assertions, the Jewish race is superior to you. Now, I don't buy into any of this. I don't think you're superior. I don't think the Jewish race is superior. And I don't think the Jewish race is a race at all, to tell you the truth. I think it's a religion. I think it's a people descended from ancient tribes who themselves have interbred by all the conquerors of the world. I don't believe in a superior race. And I don't believe in a chosen race. And I don't believe that any of this bullshit perpetrated by any of you jerks you pseudo-intellectual ignoramuses will result in anything other than pain and suffering and war and killing forever. I believe in liberty. I don't care if you marry in your race and have 80 children if you can do that to perpetuate your race. I don't care if you intermarry with another race and have children. As long as you love those children, I really don't care. I would prefer that we all mature and learn to live with each other in liberty with responsibility without trying to rip each other off or steal from each other or enslave each other or kill each other or take advantage of each other. But I also know the reality of humanity and I know that these things are going to occur. Okay? And i got to tell you, Mr. Donald E. Clark, and I've been getting mail from you for four years. And I'm sick and tired of you calling my children mongrels and curs. And if you ever have the unmitigated gall and the balls to present your ugly face in front of mine, I'm going to put my fist right through your mouth. And that, you stinking excuse for a human being, is a promise. And I really, frankly, don't give a damn whether you or the listening audience or anybody else cares or is insulted or anything else. And if you have any children, Major Clerkin, I'll stack poo up against any one of them or all of them in level of intelligence, ability, politeness, and all around just being a good little girl any day of the week. It is you that bring down all this hatred against the rest of us who don't believe as you do, don't subscribe to your ideals, and frankly, don't want anything to do with it. In my estimation, you are one of the lowest, most despicable scumbags that has ever walked upon the face of this earth. And I wish it didn't have to happen, but I believe, Mr. Clerkin, that someday, somehow, you're going to reap the reward of your own hatred, which will be an even worse hatred probably directed back at you, which will just destroy you. I hope it never happens. I hope you never have to go through the kind of suffering yourself that you cause others. You see, you, you are part of what is tearing this nation apart. You are part of what is creating the wars and the destruction and the death and the misery in this world. It is you who create the conditions for the necessity of bringing about 
a new world order to control people like you. And because of people like you, the rest of us will suffer if these things have to be brought about. And I don't know about the rest of you folks, but I'll oppose this clown until my dying day and every other clown like him. Whether it's blacks who are racist, Jews who are racist, or think they're the chosen race, or their religion is the only religion, or it's Christians, or Orientals, or whites, I don't care. I will oppose you. There's only one race upon this earth, and that is the human race. There's only one way that we can ever live in peace upon this earth, and it is not by bringing about some utopian new world order and enslaving everyone. It is by maturing, each of us individually. It is by refusing to be caught up in forms of euphemistic slavery like great numbers of poor people and blacks. who have been trapped in the very system that they claim that they were trying to get away from and that they blame upon the white man. It's your own fault for giving in to your own human frailties by thinking that you can get something for nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, here's another letter. Quote, I'm really enjoying your... Wow. I'm really enjoying your hiatally formatted series on Rosicrucian Catholic Masonic Amalgam. I'm not surprised that you got a nasty gram from a Christian, as most Christians are, essentially abstractionists. But some of us know that a good share of the scripture is allegory or metaphorical. For that particular gentleman, I would recommend an assignment. Find, purchase, and read 22 times C.W. Ledbetter's Science of the Sacrament, long out of print but occasionally to be discovered lurking in the back reaches of your neighborhood used missile emporium. One of the things which may be confusing your listeners is the generic use of the word magic, traditionally magic, applied specifically to causing change through will, while parlor tricks usurped through their performers the term of art so that it currently is used to falsely denote sleight of hand. Siegfried and Roy are entertainers, not magicians, as was also true of the great Houdini. To return to paragraph 1, by the term abstractionist, I mean that what may seem incomprehensible is accepted at face value, as understanding is too complex for most. That is one of the truly marvelous aspects of the Christian faith, in that the more or less traditional scriptures present it in such a fashion as to be adequate to any individual's capacity for understanding. For most Christians, the simply presented premise that Christ died for our sins is the necessary information. And the simple choice remains whether to accept or reject that premise 
acceptance requires equally simple standards of conduct which are specifically delineated. I think that to go beyond simple acceptance requires increasingly depth of intellect and strength of spirit in geometric progression. Maybe I'm all wet, but the more layers of the onion that are peeled away, the more tempting it is to drop the thing and remove from the zone of discomfort. Digging into the allegories of the scriptures is not for the faint of heart. Hence, I have a good deal of respect for individuals like Ledbetter, Long, John D., contemporary of Bacon, and others. None, very noticeably, ever either demonstrated or professed to an elitism of intellect, knowing that they were each dancers as separate from the dance. Know what I mean? I've gone down to the SPA time or two and found that the rail joints are electrically bridged with a welded wire strap. The business in Arizona would not have required the removal of that strap and replacement with a piece of fire engine red wire except as a red flag with sabotage emblazoned in huge black letters. ADL, JDL, ATF, you pays your money and you takes your choices. I'm saving up my money to buy one of the Fox Mike transmitters. The satellite system is far out of reach at present, but first things first. Addendum. I'm glad you brought out the reason for the barbecuing of heretics, infidels, pagans, unrepentant members of the opposition. I know that a lot of people, if they bothered to think about it, wondered at the auto de fe aspect of the so-called purification of the church. Good work, Bill. In the event that no subsequent opportunity presents itself prior to the event, happy holidays to you, your family, and your faithful, if sometimes puzzled, listeners. Up the Republic, signed Ken. <laughs> and he says, P.S. Query, if the judicial address is B.S., why do I receive my post in a timely manner when it's directed that way? It's very simple. Because... It is delivered to the zip code, not the address. With the absence of the zip code, everything has to be looked up. Everything has to be rediscovered. They don't operate that way anymore. The zip code is computerized. No one ever looks at your address until it gets to your local post office, my friend. So the mail can be delivered very quickly with a zip code. If you leave the zip code off, it takes quite a bit longer because nobody Nobody knows where the 8th Judicial District is. Nobody knows where 5054 Brownwood is. And where everybody might know where Las Vegas, Nevada is, I guarantee you that most people who work for the post office never heard of Podunk, Michigan. <laughs> so maybe that will help explain that. And... Uh, I want to be sure and read this one, because I think this one is a nice letter. William Cooper, my subject, Joe, or Tom, of Texas, dated 12th October, 95, hour of the time. When I am impassioned or spiritually burdened, I find myself with pen and paper. As I listened carefully to Joe's inflection of voice and his information, he ran the gamut from cool, cool detachment to humor to passion and to subjective analysis of past activities. I rarely hear anymore a man speak of honor. By his own statement, Joe will not write a book specifically on Mena, Arkansas, because one should not make a profit from one's office, a matter of honor with him. Pretty impressive stuff, and is an honorable man for the same. I, however, would request of Joe another road to honor. Write the book, Joe. Copyright, and then dedicate it solely for the Intelligence Service Library in Sholo. It's not in Sholo, actually, <laughs> but it's around this area. Its use being for Veritas research 
of applicable persons with a need to know. Joe simply referenced some guilt for past activities, but did not know who to apologize to. That spiritual burden, if it be that, can be reconciled with a book for the Intelligence Service Library, Kaji. And I feel, Bill, that you would offer the use of your computers if Joe needs the hardware. And we would. I think a man of his, Joe's ilk, who speaks poignantly of honor, is in fact honor-bound to leave a message for the world via a book. No profit, just a message. Another way to honor his many lost friends. As I listened to Joe, for me, there was a haunting refrain in his walk with death and dying. His job, orders given, and blindly followed. Please tell this good man to leave a message for the world, a book, this knowledge, a gift, must not be buried with you or me. Then Joe can say, I did my damnedest. Sincerely, Lita. P.S. Please invite Joe back to the hour of the time. And maybe we will. But Joe, if you're listening, I think Lita has made a point, and you don't have to give it to the Intelligence Service Library. But I think like her, you should write it, and you should give it to somebody, and you should leave it for future generations to be able to figure out the mess that we've left them. And hopefully that will help them to do that. And let me see, what else do we have here? Well, I can't get into that one, that's too long. <coughs> the following will, I hope, help crystallize a stronger movement to save our republic. After 2 a.m., I turned my shortwave on to a station which comes in on my dial around 7. I've monitored this group off and on over the last nine months or so. They use a variety of names such as F-I-R-E or University of the Air or Children of Planet Earth or RFPR or RFPI, Radio for Peace, Radio for Peace International. They give P.O. Box 88, Santa Ana, Costa Rica or P.O. Box 27028, Portland, Oregon, 97220, for donations. On this date, a woman speaker attacked WWCR radio station for providing an avenue of the air for scam to be run by people to lie and sell things. Two names were clear, Cooper and Valentine. Due to static, I could not get others mentioned. This person did not give her name. However, she did say that her segment of the broadcast was sponsored by United Nations Radio International, which is Radio for Peace International. She had several man speakers, all with foreign accents, to praise Dr. George Scheller, not sure of spelling correctness, who won the 1995 Global 500 Program Prize, this doctor went on to brag about all the various nations that he and his staff have salvaged from the path of natural destruction. She criticized the United States of America for wasting 40% of the world's natural resources. AFL-CIO was mentioned at the end of the broadcast. And, oh, prior to completion of the broadcast, a... High-ranking retired U.S. military by the name of Richard McCartney or McCarthy came on to thank everyone for listening to their bullshit. Robert Williams of ASU was mentioned a few nights ago, but couldn't get details following the name. What a shame that Rush Limbaugh earns ten million dollars per year. Plus, wonder if he is in drug business with George Bush. He does visit with Bush. Occasionally, 
A lot of hoopla was made over Clinton not being in the military, but never a word was said about George Bush sons that have not been in the military. Little was ever said about Jeb and uh, Daddy George bringing drugs through Florida while Janet Reno was Attorney General of Florida and the other sons stealing millions from the savings and loan scam. And uh, it says, God bless, no name signed on it. But folks, you ought to know, Radio for Peace International, our F-I-R-E, also known as University of the Air, Children of Planet Earth, uh, RFPR, all of these, the United, uh, let me see, United Nation Radio International, they're all, folks, this is a major propaganda outlet for the puke-faced socialists of the world. And by the way, folks, socialism, welfare, all of those things are another form of euphemistic slavery. And once you are addicted to that form of slavery, you give up everything in order to continue to be able to receive those things from your daddy, the state, since you have become the child of the state. You have reverted from a free, independent human being with rights back to a little baby in poopy diapers. Good night, folks. Up yours, Major Clerkin, and God bless everybody else. Don't miss tomorrow night's edition of the Hour of the Time, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about how NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, mooned America. <laughs>